What lies just beyond the edge of our solar system? Though we can see the playgrounds of new stars, the collision of far distant galaxies, and supernova black hole creation events from billions of light years away, our own solar backyard is still dark and mostly unexplored. Astronomers theorize that the comets that fly into the solar system with highly elliptical orbits hail from the Oort cloud. But no object there, in the estimated range of 1,000 to 100,000 astronomical units, has ever been directly observed in situ. We still know next to nothing about our solar system in general. The most distant planets Uranus and Neptune have each only been visited once since their discovery in 1781 and 1846 respectively. This was by Voyager 2, which finally reached interstellar space in 2018, six years after its twin, Voyager 1, famously was the first functional probe to reach interstellar space in 2012. New Horizons, the NASA space probe which delivered to us these incredible images of Pluto, may still be operational when it reaches interstellar space, but currently it is only Voyager 1 and 2 which have left the heliosphere are still operational and are now traveling in the interstellar medium. What have they observed since entering into the unknown? That question is best answered by first examining what they encountered before leaving the heliosphere, a dense wall of plasma. Known as the heliopause, solar wind piles up and compresses at the edge of our solar system, increasing plasma density by over 40-fold and after passing through this Voyager 1 and 2 entered into new space where the dominant matter is no longer from our sun but from the rest of the galaxy. Interstellar space is not devoid and barren, far from it. It's constantly being fed matter and energy from all nearby stars and this should result in it having completely unique properties. As of late 2023, Voyager 1 has traversed more than 40 astronomical units of interstellar space. For reference, 1 AU is the distance from the Sun to the Earth, and 40 AU is 10 astronomical units more than the distance between the Sun and Neptune. During this long traverse of interstellar space, from 123 to 163 AU, Voyager 1 has made some surprising discoveries. What began to be revealed with time and distance is a large-scale plasma density gradient in interstellar space just outside the heliopause. And there's a significant magnetic field too, with total magnetic field strength being about 0.5 nanotesla, and so far it's been increasing in strength with distance away from the sun. For comparison, the interplanetary magnetic field near Earth is on average about 5 nanotesla in strength. And Earth's magnetic field is 25,000 to 65,000 nanotesla in strength. Far from being a complete void, interstellar space is absolutely buzzing with energy, at a frequency of 3 kilohertz to be precise. Amongst this constant background turbulence, Voyager 1 has to date observed 8 distinct electron plasma oscillation events. These plasma oscillation events are characterized by a rapid increase in volatility of the microvolt strength electric field, and these electromagnetic pulses excite plasma ions of interstellar space to vibrate to a greater degree, and they can last a significant length of time. With the third plasma oscillation event detected by Voyager 1 in 2014, lasting longer than six months. What's causing these strange plasma oscillations beyond the edges of our solar system? It seems that it's our very own sun. When a rapid sequence of powerful coronal mass ejections is launched from the sun, they sometimes combine into a merged interaction region. Some mirrors will reach the heliopause and are still powerful enough to create a shockwave that ripples outwards and beyond into interstellar space. As Voyager 1 has moved further away from the heliopause, plasma oscillation events have become weaker and shorter in duration, indicating that the shockwave resulting from merge interaction regions 
hitting the heliopause can only travel so far outside the solar system. So it appears that now with Voyager 1 far enough away from the sun, it can finally measure the inherent properties of interstellar space without solar noise. Similar to how the Earth has naturally resonant frequencies of light, the Schumann resonances, interstellar space also appears to have a natural resonant frequency. Even in the most distant void of space we've ever explored, it's still alive and brimming with electrical energy, and the sun and planets are submerged in these interstellar currents. Is it possible that larger interstellar waves exist? Absolutely, but in a way that may surprise you. As we have observed from our own sun, even very large combined interaction regions have limited ability to pierce into the surrounding interstellar medium. An ultra-powerful Carrington-class coronal mass ejection may create a shockwave that ripples out further than what's been observed thus far, but in general it appears the dampening of interstellar space is quite high. Of course, the power of even a Carrington event pales in comparison to supernova events. A supernova eruption occurs on average just a few times per century in our galaxy, and current estimates suggest that there are more than a trillion galaxies in the universe. In the process of going supernova, that star emits an uber-powerful, narrow beam of coherent energy from each side, and these gamma-ray bursts can travel for millions to billions of years without being completely absorbed into the background cosmic field. Gamma ray bursts are measurable across the entire light spectrum, from radio to gamma, but especially the extremely high vibrational gamma frequencies. Notably, in October of 2022, the most powerful gamma ray burst ever was detected, dwarfing all other gamma ray bursts that had previously been observed. GRB 20221009A traveled 2.4 billion light years before it finally reached Earth, and it was so powerful that it instantly ionized the upper atmosphere and induced telur currents in Earth's surface. In interstellar space, a gamma ray burst will instantly ionize anything it travels through, creating a wave of more energized plasma dependent on the plasma density. And with 1,000 or more supernova events occurring every second throughout the universe, these extremely powerful events, in addition to everything else, combine together into an ever-dynamic interference pattern. So while it appears the interstellar medium is relatively quiet, and with no indications of any sort of apocalyptic galactic wave on the way either, it is still possible that at any moment a convergence of cosmic energies occurs such that the Earth the heliosphere as a whole, and perhaps even the Oort cloud too, experiences a massive disruptive energy surge traveling near or at the speed of light. So the next time you look up at the stars, give thanks that we're drifting in calm waters because the current can change in an instant. Our entire solar system is a simple fleck of foam floating on interstellar waves. An atom in the galactic ocean. A quark of the cosmos. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope to see you around in future ones, so please subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, then you'll certainly like this one here on the Schumann Resonances, Earth's Mysterious Energy Fields. And after going interstellar, you want to learn more comprehensively about the Earth you can get access to my Earth's Magnetic Field Master Guide through a one-time purchase via Gumroad or by special monthly membership. More details in the video description. Farewell for now, and may the Force be with you.